Over the past few years, we have watched Apple climb the music sales chart courtesy of the iTunes software. Over 5 billion songs have been sold through the Apple iTunes store, but from an ergonomic standpoint, how easy is it for users to transfer music from iTunes to their iPod? Applying the usability inspection method of cognitive walkthrough, we hope to identify usability issues, if any, in the transfer of music from iTunes to an iPod. Cognitive Walkthrough The Cognitive Walkthrough method is prized for its ability to generate results quickly with low cost, especially when compared to usability testing, as well as the ability to apply the method early in the design phases. For the trials used on the iTunes software selected as part of this project, we decided to test the ability of three types of users. The first, Jane. She has a good understanding of computers, but has no previous knowledge of using the iTunes software. She has her entire music collection on CD, but has recently received an iPod as a gift and now wishes to use the software in order to upload her music collection into a digital format for the first time. Connor is the second user. He also has a good understanding of computers and had already converted his music to a digital form. His preferred choice of software was Windows Media Player. He did not own an iPod, but he had used the iTunes software before and had a knowledge of the software. But his understanding was, however, very modest, only having used the software very sporadically. Our third, Luke, owns an iPod and used it daily as his main source of music entertainment. He was an avid user of the iTunes software and had an in-depth knowledge of all the functions and features the software had to offer. He also used other forms of music software, but had chosen iTunes as his formal software choice. For this experiment, the user will be given the task of loading music onto the iPod without a procedure to follow. This will make the user try and figure out the steps needed to complete the task. The user will be observed during the experiment. A video will be taken to record the user's on-screen actions. The user will be asked for any comments on the software and its ease of use upon completion of the task. Evaluation criteria. Will the subject try to achieve the right effect? Users may know what effect to achieve because it is part of their original task or because they have experience using a system or because the system tells them to do it. Will the subject know the correct action is available? Users may know an action is available by experience or by seeing some device like a button or by seeing a representation of an action like a menu entry. Will the subject associate the correct action with the effect to be achieved? Users may know an appropriate action for the effect they are trying to achieve by experience or because the interface provides a prompt or label that connects the action to what they are trying to do, or because all the other actions look wrong. If the correct action is performed, will the subject see progress is being made to the solution of the task? Users may know things are going okay after an action by experience or because the interface provides feedback. Our first subject was Jane. She took a total time of 9 minutes and 46 seconds to complete the task. The number of errors were above 30. The number of external prompts needed was 2. And the user relied on the software prompts to complete the task. The subject began by opening the iTunes software. She then proceeded on to connecting the iPod to the laptop via the USB cable. The software prompted her that the iPod had been connected successfully and the iPod indicated, using a flashing icon, that the iPod should not be disconnected. The subject then inserted the audio CD into the laptop CD drive. She sat and waited for a load music from CD icon which appeared after a few moments. The software then began loading the files onto the iTunes music library which took a certain amount of time. As the songs were being loaded onto the library, a green tick appeared beside the names of the song that were loaded. Jane understood this and found it to be a good help as she could easily monitor the progress that the loading operation was making. When the music was fully loaded, the subject was unsure which step was to ta be taken next. She, she searched through the file 
edit, etc. drop down menus for some sync or file transfer function. The subject was stopped from using the iTunes help as this would give the subject a procedure to follow that would not be using her own intuition. The subject attempted to use the drag and drop technique to move the title of the album in the left sidebar to the iPod icon, also in the same sidebar. As the subject saw no reason why this technique would not work, it was attempted unsuccessfully many times. The subject was then given her first prompt. She was told to select the music icon in the top left of the screen under the library heading. She was then able to find the the uploaded files on the iTunes library quite easily using the iTunes browser. The subject then successfully dragged the music file from the browser and dropped it onto the iPod symbol in the left hand sidebar. The display at the top of the screen indicated that the file transfer was taking place. This was helpful for the subject. The files quickly loaded onto the media device, the user ejected the iPod and the CD and the experiment was complete. Our second subject was Connor. He took a total time of 10 minutes and 16 seconds, with a number of errors at 5. The number of external prompts needed was 2, and he relied on software prompts. The subject began by opening the iTunes software. He then proceeded on to connecting the iPod to the laptop via the USB cable. The software prompted him that the iPod had been connected successfully, and the iPod indicated, using a flashing icon, that the iPod should not be disconnected. The subject then inserted the audio CD into the laptop CD drive. He sat and waited for a load music from CD icon, which appeared after a few moments. The software then began loading the files onto the iTunes music library, which took a certain amount of time. As the songs were being loaded onto the library, the green tick appeared beside the names of the song that were loaded. Connor understood this and found it to be a good help as he could easily monitor the progress that the loading operation was making. The Apple advertisement at the bottom of the screen proved to be distracting for the user as it took up a large proportion of the interface and an obvious means of getting rid of it was not present. After all of the music was loaded onto the iTunes library, the user was unsure of what to do next. He was expecting to see another software prompt like the one previous, asking if he would like to load the music onto the library, but a prompt did not appear. He navigated around the screen, investigating each icon to determine its function. In doing this, he was hoping to uncover some kind of sync or data transfer function. There were many icons around the screen for things such as repeat, random, add playlists, etc., but none for the purpose of file transfer. The subject then scrolled through the standard drop-down menu, file, view, edit, etc. But this did not lead him to finding the suitable icon. The subject was then given his first prompt. He was told to select the music icon in the top left of the screen under the library heading. He was then able to find the uploaded files on the iTunes library quite easily using the iTunes browser. After finding the files, the user still did not know how to transfer the music onto the iPod. He right-clicked on the files in an attempt to copy and paste the files onto the iPod. This did not work. After some time, the user was prompted for the second time. He was told to drag the full album from the iTunes browser and drop it onto the iPod icon on the left-hand side of the screen. This action proved to be successful. The display at the top of the screen indicated that the file transfer was taking place. This was helpful for the, for the subject. The files quickly loaded onto the media device. The user ejected the iPod and the CD and the experiment was complete.